Have you ever considered how diverse the spectrum of human gender really is? As we journey through life, we often encounter ideas and concepts that challenge our preconceived notions. And one such idea is the understanding of gender beyond the binary. It's a simple yet complex concept that has been acknowledged and embraced by various cultures and societies across the globe. From the Hijras of India, the two-spirit people of the Native American tribes, to the Farfafin of Samoa, the existence of a third gender is as diverse as humanity itself. This spectrum of gender is not a modern invention, but rather a profound recognition of human diversity that has been part of human cultures for centuries. So, let's broaden our horizons, question our assumptions, and venture into the less explored territories of human identity. Dive in with us as we explore the fascinating world of the third gender. The concept of gender is multifaceted and layered. It's like a tapestry woven with threads of biology, identity, and culture. And to truly understand it, we must unravel these threads one by one. Let's start with the basic thread, the difference between sex and gender. Sex is a biological term. It's determined by the physical and genetic characteristics that differentiate males from females. Think of chromosomes, reproductive organs, and secondary sexual characteristics like facial hair or breasts. But gender? That's a whole different ball game. Gender is a social construct. It's about the roles, behaviors, activities, and expectations that society deems appropriate for men and women. While sex is about biology, gender is about identity. Now you might think, well, if sex is binary, isn't gender binary too? Not necessarily. You see, while sex is generally categorized as male or female, gender can be much more fluid. It's a spectrum. And on this spectrum, there's room for more than just male and female. This brings us to the concept of the third gender, a term that is used to acknowledge the existence of individuals who don't fit neatly into the binary categories of male or female. This isn't a new idea. In fact, many cultures around the world have recognized the existence of a third gender for centuries. But keep in mind, the third gender isn't about biology alone. It's about identity. It's about how a person feels inside, how they perceive themselves. So when we talk about the third gender, we're not just talking about physical characteristics or genetic markers. We're talking about individuals who identify as neither male nor female, or perhaps as a bit of both. In essence, the third gender challenges our traditional understanding of gender as a binary concept. It invites us to think outside the box, to see gender as a spectrum rather than a set of rigid categories. It's a testament to the complexity and diversity of human identity. So, the third gender isn't about biology alone, it's about identity. Did you know that the third gender is recognized and respected in many cultures around the world? Let's take a journey across the globe to explore how different societies honor this diversity. Starting in South Asia, we find the Hijras, a community that's been part of the cultural landscape for centuries. Hijras are considered neither entirely male nor female. They are revered in some aspects of society, often called upon to perform at birth ceremonies and weddings, believed to bring good luck and fertility. Hijras have a unique and respected place in the subcontinent's history and continue to shape its future. Next, we travel to the indigenous cultures of North America, where we encounter the Two-Spirit people. This term, coined in the late 20th century, encompasses various gender identities outside the binary male-female framework. Two-spirit individuals were traditionally respected as mediators and spiritual leaders, embodying both masculine and feminine qualities. They held and still hold a significant place in their communities, reminding us of the fluidity of gender. Our journey concludes in the Pacific in Samoa, where the Farfafin have been an integral part of the culture for generations. Farfafin, which translates to in the manner of a woman, are individuals assigned male at birth but embody both male and female gender roles. They are accepted and loved members of their families and communities, contributing to the social fabric through their unique roles. As we traverse these diverse cultures, we see that the third gender is not a modern construct, but a deeply ingrained part of human history. It's a testament to the complexity of our identities and the richness of our shared heritage. These communities are living reminders that there's no one right way to be a man or a woman or anything in between.
It's clear that the third gender has deep roots and a rich history in our world. It's a history that invites us to open our minds, embrace diversity, and celebrate the beautiful spectrum of human identity. What does science say about the third gender? Well, the science of gender is complex and multifaceted involving elements of genetics, hormones, and brain structure. Let's delve into each of these areas to gain a better understanding. Genetics, our biological blueprint, plays a significant role in determining our physical characteristics, including sex. Traditionally, we think of XX chromosomes leading to female development and XY leading to male development. However, variations exist. For example, individuals with androgen insensitivity syndrome are genetically male, XY, but due to a genetic mutation, their bodies don't respond to androgens, which are male hormones. As a result, they can develop physical characteristics typically associated with women. Next, let's talk about hormones. During fetal development, hormones influence the formation of sexual characteristics and potentially brain structure. Hormones like testosterone and estrogen play crucial roles in this process. But it's not just about the presence of these hormones, it's also about when they're present and how the body responds to them. Hormonal variations can contribute to gender diversity, leading to identities that might not align with traditional male or female categories. Now, on to brain structure. Some research suggests that the brains of transgender individuals may more closely resemble the brains of their experienced gender rather than their assigned sex at birth. For instance, a study found that transgender women, assigned male at birth but identify as female, had a brain structure more similar to cisgender women than to cisgender men. However, it's important to note that the science of neurology is far from definitive and ongoing research is necessary to fully understand these complex interactions. In conclusion, the science of gender is intricate and nuanced, involving a combination of genetic, hormonal, and neurological factors. It's not a simple binary of male or female, but a spectrum of identities that are all part of the rich tapestry of human diversity. Science is continually evolving, and so is our understanding of gender. In the modern world, how does the third gender fit in? As we move into the 21st century, societies and legal systems worldwide are increasingly recognizing the third gender. This recognition, however, is not uniform across the globe and varies significantly from one country to another. In some parts of the world, such as India and Nepal, the third gender has been legally recognized for several years. In India, for instance, the Supreme Court accorded the status of third gender to hijras or transgender individuals in the year 2014. This landmark ruling provided legal recognition and protection to this marginalized community, granting them the same rights and protections as any other citizen. Similarly, in the West, countries like Germany, Australia and Canada have made strides in acknowledging the third gender. In 2017, Germany became the first European nation to recognize a third gender officially. The country now allows individuals to choose diverse as an option on birth certificates and other official documents. However, the journey towards legal recognition is just one part of the story. Social acceptance remains a significant challenge for individuals who identify as third gender. Stereotypes and prejudices persist often leading to discrimination in employment, healthcare, and other crucial areas of life. Moreover, the third gender community continues to grapple with issues such as violence, harassment, and social exclusion. Despite legal protections, they often find themselves at the receiving end of hate crimes and other forms of violence. Education plays a crucial role in breaking down these barriers and fostering a more inclusive society. By promoting understanding and acceptance, it can pave the way for a world where individuals of all genders are treated with respect and dignity. In conclusion, while significant progress has been made in recognizing the third gender, there are still numerous hurdles to overcome. Legal recognition is important, but it's only the first step. The real challenge lies in changing societal attitudes and achieving true acceptance. Progress has been made, but there's still a long way to go for complete acceptance and understanding. So, what have we learned about the third gender? We've taken a journey through history and across cultures, witnessing the diverse ways in which the third gender is understood and recognized. 
We've seen that from the Hijra of India to the two-spirit people of indigenous America, the third gender has a rich and varied cultural legacy. On the scientific front, we've delved into the complex interplay of genetics, hormones and environment that can contribute to the birth of the third gender. We've recognized that science is still evolving in understanding this intricate phenomenon. In the modern world, we've observed how the third gender is slowly gaining recognition and rights, though there's still a long way to go. The third gender is not an anomaly or an aberration. It's a vital part of the human tapestry, adding to the diversity that makes us unique. Remember, understanding and accepting the diversity of human gender is not just about knowledge, it's about empathy and respect.